Hi folks, here's some more chapter 14 problems. Here goes. A 70 gram bullet traveling 250 meters per second penetrates a block of ice at zero Celsius and comes to rest within the ice. Assuming that the temperature of the bullet doesn't change, appreciably how much ice is melted as a result of the collision. This is another lovely problem because you're combining different areas of physics. Here's the concept. The incoming bullet this incoming bullet is going to have some kinetic energy. That kinetic energy of that incoming bullet, as it hits this block of ice, that incoming bullet, when it penetrates, that is going to be transformed into heat energy. And we have talked lots and lots about heat, the result of lots of kinetic energy, um, explosions, collisions, things like that. This time we're actually going to do a calculation about that. So the kinetic energy of the bullet, is going to be used to melt ice. Now, how do you calculate kinetic energy? It's going to be 1 half mass velocity squared. Haven't used that one in a while. To melt ice, then we're going to use the latent heat of fusion equation. Mass of the ice involved in melting times the latent heat of fusion. So we're solving for how much ice is melted. So the mass of the ice is going to be, it does look like mice, I know, is going to be one half the mass of the bullet, velocity of the bullet squared, divided by the latent heat of fusion of that ice. So the mass of the ice is going to be one half the mass of the bullet. Now the mass of the bullet is 70 grams, so that's 0 0.07 kilograms. The initial velocity of the bullet is 250 meters per second, and that whole quantity is squared. Latent heat of fusion of ice is 3.33 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram. Now when I throw all of that into a calculator, I get the mass of ice that is actually melted. I end up with 0 0.0066 kilograms. And if you convert, yoop, 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 that ends up being 6.6 uh, .6 grams of ice that is actually melted. Let's take a moment and look at those units because that unit kind of looked like magic up there, didn't it? So I've got, let's just be real careful about this, I've got kilograms, meters squared, seconds squared. So I've got kilogram, meters squared, second squared. In the bottom there is a joule, and then the sub-basement there's a kilogram, so that means it comes back up on top. A joule, if you recall, is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So I'm going to replace a joule with that. So I'm going to rewrite this one more time. Kilogram meter squared per second squared is a joule, so a kilogram meter squared per second squared. All of this I'm putting in place of the joule, and then there's another kilogram on top. Now we're ready to cross out kilogram, kilogram squared, squared, second squared, second squared, there's my kilograms. So I must have done my algebra correctly. Next problem. The surface, we're now getting into conduction, convection, and radiation. The amount of heat per second conducted from the blood capillaries beneath the skin to the surface is 240 joules per second. So that is the rate of heat transmission. So that is my delta Q in a unit of time. So that's 240 joules per second, also a power rating in watts, same units. The energy is transferred a distance, so distance, of 0 0.002 meters through a body whose surface area is 1.6 meters squared. Assuming that the thermal conductivity of that body is body fat, determine the temperature difference between the capillaries and the surface of the skin. So temperature difference between the capillaries and the surface of the skin is what we're looking for, and we have to use the thermal conductivity constant of body fat. Now where are we going to find that thermal conductivity constant of body fat? That is also known as a K constant. That is on that pink constant sheet that I gave you, and if you're taking this online, it's a constant sheet I asked you to print early on in the course. And so for body fat, the K constant is 
0.20 joules per seconds meters degrees Celsius. This is thermal conductivity. The conductivity equation is change of heat flow per unit time. Change of energy over time is the K constant times area change in temperature divided by the thickness of the material. We're solving for delta T, change in temp. So the change in temperature is going to be delta Q over T, that change in energy per unit time. Um, then it's going to be uh, then la -ti -ta -ti -ta multiplied by the thickness divided by the K constant, the thermal conductivity constant, and the area. So I'm just going to go down below so I have a little more wiggly room to write. And here goes. So the change in temp is going to be that power rating right there. And the power rating was 240 joules per second. The thickness of this material is 0 0.002 meters. The thermal conductivity coefficient for fat is 0 0.20 joules per seconds meters degree Celsius. And we put the surface area 1.6 meters squared down below. When we haul out our calculator and click all the lovely buttons, I end up with a change in temperature inside to outside of 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now one more time, let's take a few minutes and look at those units because those units are kind of, kind of ugly. Um, you get to a point in physics where you, you start to trust your algebra if you've done enough of it, but the units are always still kind of fun to play with. So I've got joules per second, joules per second. I've got meters over joules, and in the sub-basement I've got seconds, meters, degrees Celsius. So that means they come up top. Seconds, meters, degrees Celsius. This is down below meters squared. So let's take a look. Um, seconds, seconds, joules joules. I've got meters times meters, meters times meters, meters squared. Those are going to cancel. I end up with degrees Celsius. I end up with temperature. That is a happy, happy day in physics land. All right, let's do one more of these. One end of an iron poker is placed in a fire. The temperature is 502 degrees Celsius, and the other end is at 25. So you can kind of predict we're going to have a change in temperature of 502 degrees Celsius minus 26 degrees Celsius. My bad, I misread that. So the change in temperature there is 476 degrees Celsius. The poker is 1.2 meters long. That's going to be the length of my conducting object, 1.2 meters. It has a radius of 5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. That is going to, so that is the radius. So I've got this long poker. It's 1.2 meters long, and the radius, the radius, is 5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. Hmm, okay. Ignoring the heat lost along the length of the poker, find the amount of heat conducted from one end to the other end in five seconds. So I'm looking for Q, that's my question mark, and my time is five seconds. All right, now this is all, because it says conducted, heat conducted. We're going to use our thermal conductivity equation. Thermal conductivity equation is going to be change in energy per unit time is going to be equal to our thermal conductivity equation, excuse me, constant, times area, change in temp, length. And we're going to solve this little beastie for energy. That's what we want. So energy is going to be equivalent to thermal conductivity times area, change in temp, uh, length, and then temperature, excuse me, time is then going to be multiplied on both sides, so time's going to go up there. So what pieces don't we have? We have to look up K. What kind of poker do we have? Let's see if it tells us. I'm trying to pull my little sheet up. It says iron. So the thermal conductivity for iron, the K constant for iron, is 79 joules per second 
meter degree Celsius, so I've got that. I've got the change in temp right there. I've got the length right there. I've got the time, five seconds. I don't have area. I need to calculate the cross-sectional area of that. So let's take a moment and calculate the area, the cross-sectional area across the end of that poker. This is the area of a circle is going to be pi r squared. So this is going to be pi times the radius, 5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters, and that whole quantity is going to be squared. So the cross-sectional area here is going to be 7.85 times 10 to the negative fifth meters squared, and that's going to be my cross-sectional area. I now think I have all the pieces, so I am going to put the pieces into my equation. Q is going to be thermal conductivity constant, 79 joules per seconds meters degree Celsius. Area, 7.85 times 10 to the negative fifth meters squared. Change in temperature. Change in temperature we calculated above 476 degrees Celsius. Time. Time, we were told, is 5 seconds. 5 seconds of time. And the length, we were told that the entire length of the poker is 1.2 meters. When I shove all of that into my calculator, I end up with 12.3 joules of energy that are conducted up that poker in 5 seconds of time. Let's take a moment and look at our units. Um, let's see, degrees Celsius cancels Celsius. Here's a meter and a meter, going to cancel those meters squared, seconds cancel seconds. We end up with joules, another happy day in physics land.